In this video, we're gonna ditch the Festool Domino, and I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing with just a plunge router using this super simple, super cheap mortising jig. And to demonstrate how to use it, we're gonna make this cute little step stool that we can all use to assist all of our smaller loved ones. Plans are available for both in the description. Let's get into it. Let's get one thing straight right away. I am not a domino hater by any means. I of course own one and I use it regularly. But I do remember life before the domino and not being able to justify coughing up the cash to buy one. It's a great tool, but it's also kind of a one trick pony. A plunge router on the other hand, or even just a plunge base for a standard trim router is a much more versatile investment that you can get into for almost any price point, depending on what size and brand you get into. There's also a healthy second hand market for these. You can do so many different things with a good plunge router, from template routing to hogging out the middle of things, making dados, and so on. So right off the bat, if you're still somewhat new to woodworking and you find routers intimidating, I'll tell you it's totally worth it to overcome that hesitation and take the plunge. See what I did there? If you're looking for recommendations on what routers to buy, I'll leave links to the routers I use in the description. I can sincerely recommend all of them, but I will say I really like the responsiveness, locking mechanism, and micro adjust on my Makita routers the best. But using a plunge router to do floating tin and joinery does require you to use some sort of jig, which brings us to this guy. This is a really simple jig that basically mounts to your router and lets you center it on the edge or end of a board, plunge down to your required depth along the length of the mortise you need, and then sweep it back and forth to clear out the remaining waste. So before we build this jig, let's briefly go over how it's designed in detail. Very simply, you have a base plate which has a hole in it to allow the bit to pass through and holes that mount up to the router and two slots that are cut most of the way across it. Then you have these two rails that are mounted perpendicular to those slots with some jig hardware bolts that are countersunk into them. The knobs make it easy to tighten into place. Okay, to get started, we're going to grab a scrap chunk of MDF and cut it to our desired length of 14 inches and 11 inches wide. I'm using MDF for mine because it's plenty durable and smooth for my uses and a lot more stable than hardwood. That said, if you have a nice stable chunk of hardwood, you can make yours nicer than mine. We'll cut this larger chunk into the three parts we need and then head over to the router table to cut out the slots. These don't have to be open-ended, but it's easier to cut them this way. If you don't have a router table, you can also just drill holes at each end of the slots and use a jigsaw or bandsaw to cut out the waste. However, it's important that you get the sides of these slots smooth to ensure ease of use when setting up the jig. To attach the rails to the base, you'll likely need to counter bore the bolt heads into the edges to allow enough of the bolts to extend on the other side to thread on the knobs that will hold them in place. Now we just need to prepare it to attach to the router base. To do this, we'll take off the existing base plate and use it as a template to locate the mounting holes and cut the through hole for the bit. Then it's just a matter of attaching it all together and setting up a bit. So instead of just demonstrating generally how to use this jig, I thought it would be fun to give you a little extra value by actually building a simple piece to show this thing in a real life scenario. I've designed this stool to be made of four pieces that are held together with four loose tenons that will cut with this very jig. So let's go mill up some walnut. <laughs> 
Now we just need to add the joinery. But first, let's talk for a second about tenons. Now, these are a couple of different ones that you can buy on Amazon and places like that. Uh, these are some five millimeter thick ones and 10 millimeter thick ones uh, that I buy, which are the Tay Tools brand. So you don't actually have to buy the Festool brand ones if you're going to use this jig and you just need dominoes. However, if you're using a quarter inch bit like I'm using with my router, then you can get six millimeter tenons as well, which will fit pretty snugly and just allowing for a tiny bit of glue. But you can also easily make your own, which I'm doing here. And this is where you can get a bit wild and do things like make tenons that are super wide. So I'm just making a really big sheet of this and then I will cut them to the dimensions that I want and put roundovers on the sides. The important thing here is to make sure you're running the grain along the length of the tenons so that you have long grain going into the mortise, which ensures that your tenons provide plenty of strength and don't break under tension. Now, before we start cutting mortises, I wanna quickly say thanks for watching so far and invite you to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content like this, as well as the build videos that I do. I've got plans for a few builds coming up that you won't wanna miss. So the way I set up the router is to plan to cut no deeper than half the thickness of the part. So on these sides, I'll set it so I'm plunging around 3 8 of an inch deep. To determine the depth of a mortise on a plunge base like this, the easiest method is to plunge the bit down to touch the surface of the workpiece with the router off and lock it in place. Then place a setup block between the depth stop and the depth adjustment rod like this and lower the depth adjustment rod until it touches the surface of a setup block. Remove the block and unlock the router, and now the router is set up to plunge exactly 3 8 of an inch into the workpiece. When laying out your mortises to cut with a router, don't bother finding the outer edges. Instead, just mark the center of the mortise and each end of the mortise. I also like to inset my mortises at least half an inch from the edges of a workpiece. This ensures that there's enough stock remaining to provide the necessary strength. I had to get a little creative when cutting the mortises on the legs to accept the center support part because I had already cut out my angled leg parts. If I were to do this again, I would have cut out the legs in a rectangle first so I would have a square edge running parallel to the mortise I needed to make and use that edge to cut these mortises before template routing. In any case, I made this little jig that uses the offcut for making my template with the same angle to give me a fence for my router. To set up the jig, place the router and jig on the edge with all the knobs for the jig rails a little bit loose and with the router off, plunge the bit down to contact the surface of the workpiece. Align the bit so that the center of the bit rests on the center line you just drew. Carefully move the jig rails into place so that they sandwich the workpiece and tighten all four knobs to hold it in place. Now check all along the length of the mortise to ensure that the bit stays centered as you move it to each end. Release the plunge and make any remaining preparations for the cut, such as attaching dust collection and donning protective gear. Then with the ends of my mortise marked out, I'll find the edge of my bit and line it up at one end of the mortise and then it's go time. Plunge to full depth. Then find the other end and plunge there. Now I'll work my way along the length of the mortise, repeating this plunge until most of the waste is cleared out before returning to the end, plunging down and making long passes to clear out the waste until I've reached the full depth. Now, as we glue these tenons in, it's important to point out that if you fit your tenons to your mortise too perfectly, you could actually cause a problem where the glue and tenon actually captures a pocket of air beneath the tenon, preventing it from seating. That's actually why store-bought tenons have these little grooves, which allow glue to flow into them and escape out of the mortise. One way to avoid that problem is to just cut the tenon a tiny bit wide on purpose which can allow a bit of that glue to flow around in a similar way. However, my recommendation here is to just not overdo it with the glue. Since loose tenon joinery creates long grain to long grain glue connections, you don't need a ton of glue to make a solid permanent connection. 
So there you go. This little jig is a great one to have around whether you have a domino or not. If you enjoy this video and want a quick set of plans, as a reminder, you can pick up plans for both the mortising jig and this little stool for cheap on my website at sturdyboneswoodworking.com plans. I've got links to all the hardware items you'll need listed there as well as in the video description. And finally, I'm gonna be putting up a full build video of this stool with a ton more detail on my Patreon page. So if you'd like to see that and support the channel as well, I would genuinely appreciate having you join my Patreon community. I also post commentary versions of my builds there, as well as offer all my plans for free to members. But of course, no pressure. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.